Hello there you guys and welcome to a new video. So today's video is going to be my wrap up for the month of July. So I'm going to talk to you guys through all the books that I read this month. And yeah, let's get started. So in the month of July, I read a total of five books, which is roughly my average sort of reading month. I can average about roughly five books per month. This was, July was actually my first month, full month, of working full time. So it was a bit of an adjustment month. Uh, July was also my birthday month. And one of the books that I did read this month, I actually got for my birthday, actually as a birthday gift to myself because there wasn't anything going to stop me from reading this book. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys through all the books. So the first book that I read this month was actually the first volume of Attack on Titan. And for those of you who don't know what Attack on Titan is, Attack on Titan is a dystopian fantasy science fiction um, manga series originally, it has been since adapted into an anime, which I have seen except for the last season, which is currently still airing right now and will finish up airing sometime in 2022. So, but I decided that, you know, since this anime is one of my favorites, I decided that I was going to read read the first, read the first volume, and kind of notice the, some of the similarities and differences, because I've seen the first season, like, a couple of times. So, I, I read this book on my Kindle. I'm sorry, I don't have it out in front of you to show you, but it's charging right now, so I'm not going to do that. I am going to put a photo of the cover of the book. So, this book is actually one of the oldest published books that I read this month. It was actually published in 20... The manga was actually... The first time when the manga was published in 2012, tied for another book that I also read for this month with the fullest publication date. So, let's go through call pile scores for Attack on Titan. So, I gave Attack on Titan an 8 for characters, an 8 for atmosphere, an 8 for writing, an 8 for plot, a 10 for intrigue, an 8 for logic, and 9 for enjoyment. Which roughly translates to how I felt about it when I was actually watching, you know, the, the TV, the, the anime for the first time. I did really enjoy it, that's why my enjoyment is so high, and I did, the intrigue kind of did get me. Because I decided to rate this as how I would have felt when I was watching. If I had read it before I had watched it, I would have thought the intrigue was high. Which it is. Now since I've watched it, and i since watched the episode since, the intrigue is, of course, low. Because I know it's going to happen. Um, I do think that the scores do reflect the rating for... This book. So this book actually got, with those scores, it got an 8.43 out of 10, which means it's a 4 star. I definitely will be continuing with reading the manga to notice the differences, and I will also be continuing to, of course, watch the anime. It's one of my favorites. The second book that I read during the month of July, well, at least I recorded it second, is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. So this book is a book. I, of course, read this book physically since I do have a physical copy. Floppy paperback here. I do love floppy paperback. Um, this is a dystopian fantasy. So it essentially follows the characters from the first book, Scythe. I'm not going to give a synopsis um, because this is the second book in the series. Yeah, let's see if this rating got a different score than the first one. So, I actually gave um, Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman an 8 for characters, a 9 for atmosphere, a 10 for writing, an 8 for plot, 
9 for intrigue, logic, and enjoyment, which gave it an 8.86 out of 10, which is a 4 star. My TBR game for the month of July is different from the past because I decided that I was going to choose my books based off of prompts, which I did actually find to be really enjoyable, and it kind of allowed me to still choose what I wanted to read and still not choose what I wanted to read, if you know what I mean. It made my reading more enjoyable, and I actually got to read this book this month, and doing it that way with the reading prompts, I get to spread out my series more and then look forward to the next book when I get to it. It did get a four star for me. I think this came up for the prompt for five star prediction, so I'm actually bummed that it actually didn't get five stars. I'm very sad about that, and the reason is probably the characters. There is a character in this book that I particularly didn't enjoy very much, and he was kind of like an off-putting character, and every time like I read from him, I'm like, can you please go away? Like, I didn't quite understood where he fit into the plot, and I kind of still don't. I'm hoping the third and final book will kind of resolve that issue for me. Um, I've heard from people that the third book is kind of hit or miss, but we'll see. So I do have this book. I did read this book physically. Um, I, of course, will be continuing on with the third and final book since I'm, I'm very close to the end since so it is a trilogy. I wish I could give you guys a synopsis of the book, but alas, I can't. It's the second book in a, in a trilogy. So there's that book. The third book that I read this month was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I also read this book on my Kindle as an ebook. It is a contemporary book. I do enjoy contemporary books when I get to read them. It kind of puts me in a wholesome mood. So, I didn't tell you guys this before, but Attack on Titan was for the prompt to read a graphic novel slash manga, and With Fire on High was to read a book with food on the cover. And the cover of this book does have quite a lot of fruit in the cover. It has, like, papayas and mango that so definitely fits the prompt. Um, this is actually a standalone book. There is no series with this book, at least not of the time that I'm filming this video. I kind of wish there was, because I would like to see kind of what happens more. But anyways, call pile rating. Um, I gave this book a 9 for characters a 9 for atmosphere, a 10 for writing, an 8 for plot, an 8 for intrigue, a 9 for logic, and a 9 for enjoyment, which gives it an 8.86 out of 10, which is a which is a 4 star. I really enjoyed actually reading this book. It made me really hungry because at the beginning of every like part section, it lists a recipe of the food. And it just made me really hungry. And it's, it's mainly about food. So it's about this young girl who lives in Philadelphia. And she has a child. Which she had when she was 16. And she really loves to cook. And that's kind of like her main passion. And that's kind of what she wants to be in the future. She kind of wants to be a chef. So it's about her like... You know, managing school, managing her little girl, managing cooking, and stuff like that. So, I gave it a 10 for writing, mainly because of the food, because it sounded delicious when I read it. I'm actually really glad I read it. Um, I got the recommendation from, I can't remember who it is I got it from, but when they read it, they said that it was really, really good. And the food was really good. So I'm actually glad that I got a chance to read this book. The fourth book that I read for the month of July is my most anticipated read for the probably entire year. And that is Any Way the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. This is the book that I pre-ordered for my birthday. Um, this book actually did come out in July, and it came up for the prompt to read a book by my favorite author. Um, so far I have read, well at the time that I was reading this book, I'd have read three other books by Rainbow Rowell, and they all got five stars. 
Um, so Carry On, We Were Son, the first two books in this trilogy got five stars, and Fangirl also got five stars from me. So I knew that I was going to really like this book. Simon and Baz are my babies, which you'll see why in a minute. This is actually um, my most recent published book being published this year. I have read some other books. I don't know if I actually read some more books. Anyways, it is my most recent, like, publication book that I've read for the month of July, and it is a, actually, series completion. Um, so far, it is a series completion for the trilogy. However, Rainbow Rowell has said that she is probably going to come back to these characters at some point. So, whenever that does happen, I am very much looking forward to reading it. This book is, of course, a fantasy contemporary. Um, it is also definitely definitely LGBTQ+, which is always a hit for me. I love LGBTQ plus books. And you'll be happy to know my ratings. So this book got a 10, a 10 for characters, a 10 for atmosphere, a 9 for writing, 9 for plot, 8 for intrigue, 9 for logic, and 10 for enjoyment, which brings it a 9.29 out of 10, which is definitely a 5 stars. Um, Simon and Baz are my babies. I will always rate them five stars. It, it is a disappointment for me to give Intrigue for this book an eight, but compared to the other two books in this series, the Intrigue did sort of drop for me. And I really don't know why. And I think it's because I didn't particularly think that the action in this book was too action-packed heavy, and it was more of the contemporary side, which, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy. And the thing that I have been wanting to happen, happen in while reading the other two books in this trilogy did happen roughly near page 100, which I kind of wasn't expecting until the end, which should have been why I gave this book a 10 for intrigue, and I should have done that, but because that happened so far close to the beginning, the intrigue then dropped. But yeah, this still this book did still get a 5 stars for me. It is not actually the highest 5 star rating. I believe the other two books get higher than this, but still got a 5 stars nonetheless. I am very happy I read this book. I am very happy that I have a physical copy of this book to read. I only need to get Wayward Son as a physical copy, and then I have the full series. And definitely at some point, probably next year, I might do a I might do a reread and I might do a whole video on it. Well we'll see when the time comes to it and probably while I do the reread I will tab and annotate. So look forward to that probably next year. And the last book that I read during the month of July is The Song of Achilles. Um, I also read this book on my Kindle. This came up for the prompt to read a historical fiction. Now, I don't really like historical fiction too much. If it's about a time period that I'm kind of not interested in. And I decided to go with this historical fiction because it's Greek slash Roman mythology, since they're roughly similar. I'm actually very surprised with this book, and I'll tell you why in a second, but I'm very surprised about the rating it got. So this book is definitely a historical fiction. It is essentially a, actually a retelling, which I didn't quite realize until I sort of got into it that it is a retelling. It is a Trojan War, Trojan history retelling. It's actually a retelling of the Iliad by Homer, which I believe that I did read when I was in middle school, high school, probably for English class. So I did know somewhat the story of Achilles, but I kind of didn't know roughly sort of what it was about until I read this. So it's not, I don't know how well the match it is a retelling to it since I read the Iliad so much more in the future. So I can't really give you guys an explanation as to like, you know, how it compares and where the, where the differences and such are 
to this book, and I wish I wish I could, but it is definitely a retelling. Um, it also has LGBTQ plus representation in it. Um, the two main characters, Achilles and Patroclus, are portrayed as being LGBT in this book. It is speculative as to where the history goes, whether or not that's actually true or not. From what I've read from online, historians are either one way or the other. But my call file rating. So this book, I gave it a 10 for characters. Any book where the LGBTQ plus representation with two boys, it's going to get a 10 out of 10 for me, hands down. I gave it a 9 for atmosphere, a 9 for writing. I, I gave this book a 7 for plots. And that's sort of because... The actual plot of the Iliad, like the main battle fight scene, doesn't have until the end. It's mainly about them going through training and stuff, which I kind of really didn't like as so much sort of the plot, and I was looking for more action. So that's why I gave it a 7 for plot. Um, an 8 for intrigue, and a both 9 for logic and enjoyment. So I did actually really enjoy reading this book, and it got an 8.71 out of 10, which is a 4 star for me. I didn't really think that I was actually going to like The Song of Achilles as much as I did, and I'm actually very happy that I actually did like it. So it does mean that I'm broadening my tastes enough, but I'm going to have to do, of course, more reading in the historical fiction genre to determine whether or not it's actually in Part of my comfort zone or not. As of this moment, it's still out of my comfort zone in terms of what I like to read. As you can tell from probably the other videos that I posted, I like to read more fantasy, science fiction, contemporary style books, and less of the thriller, mystery, and horror, and romance sort of style books. At least more of the adult style romance. That is going to be it for my video today, guys. If you liked it, please give this video a like and comment down below what you guys actually read in July. I'm, I know I'm posting this kind of late, but, you know, that's sort of how the month of July went for me. It was very busy with me trying to juggle everything still with work. I still haven't juggled everything still with work, so my videos are going to be a little bit sporadic for a while until I find a method that works for me. At least I'm getting some reading done, so my Goodreads goal I'm actually like 10 books away from, and I might actually end up completing it in September, and I was supposed to years, so definitely look forward to my videos towards the end of the year where I do end of the year wrap-ups and stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did, please remember to give this video a like and a subscribe. Comment down below what you guys read in the month of July. Remember, guys, we are the one within the all, and I'll speak to you guys in my next video.